So now that the big waves of free agency are pretty much over, now we are heading toward April. And you know what April means? It means NFL draft season. And it's really exciting because now we can really look at what the Jaguars did in free agency and take that and look forward to the, dra to the draft. And I know a lot of people have this debate about who's going to go number one overall. And it feels like Aiden Hutchinson is going to be the pick. But now it's all about what do we do at number 33? And the big thing that everybody is talking about is not what we do at number 33, but what receiver do we take at number 33? So in this video, we are going to dive into that. Now, before we get into this video content, a quick word to our guys at Manscaped. Now, Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming. They offer precision engineer tools for your family jewels. And if you get the performance package 4.0, it comes with a sweet tote bag. Also comes with the weed whacker for your ear and nose hairs. And also it comes with the lawnmower 4.0, which is LED lit. It's waterproof as well, so you can use it downstairs and all kinds of different ball toners and conditioners. And if you want to use my promo code UCFJ, you can get 20% off and free shipping for your next order. That is going to manscaped.com. Link is in the description and also pinned comment. And with that said, let's get back to the video. Now, there are three different ways you can address the wide receiver position. You can go into free agency, and the Jaguars obviously did that pretty heavily. They gave Christian Kirk a pretty big contract, Zay Jones a big contract, and one guy that we need to talk about when we talk about the different wide receiver options are also the receiving options. And with that said, the Jaguars did bring in Evan Ingram, who's going to be used heavily in the pass game. He's not in here to be in here on third downs and you know block the guy you know third and ones and, and block the defensive end he's not here for that you know he is here for an athletic move tight end so he should be considered when we talk about um, different different receiving options you can also acquire via trade and obviously we've seen a bunch go through I mean two of the top wide receivers in the NFL got moved with Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill uh, both teams gave up pretty big capital the Jaguars did not seem to be in on the Tyreek Hill trade, although they were in on the Amari Cooper trade uh, before he wound up going to the Browns. It was more of a how much money do we, want, do we want to take on type of issue. However, Amari Cooper, the only reason they were in on that was because it was for a day three pick. I have a feeling that the Jaguars don't really want to give up many of their, you know, their, their day two picks, meaning you know, second or third round picks to get any veterans out there. So the Jaguars looks like they're going to hold Pat where they are and kind of keep their draft capital that way. So now obviously comes the NFL draft, the NFL draft. And the Jaguars have a lot of draft capital. I mean, first pick in every round, uh, they got the number one pick, which Hutchinson will, Hutch, which it's looking like Hutchinson will be the pick. We can get into this at a different time, um, but it feels like a big guy, whether it be Hutchinson or, you know, maybe an Evan Neal if they go the tackle route. And potentially they can move back, although it, it feels more likely that the Jaguars will move up from 33 than move back from number one. It just seems like it's playing out that way. So um, for the sake of this video, the Jaguars will be sticking at number one. Now, when we look at different wide receiver options, there we have to look at what teams are picking before us. Now, at pick number 28... Green Bay is picking. They obviously just traded Devontae Adams. They're probably going to be in that receiver market. Pick number 29 and 30 are owned by Kansas City, who obviously just traded away Tyreek Hill. There's a good chance they might take receiver. Um, pick number 31 is Cincinnati. They probably won't pick wide receiver. And pick number 32 is Detroit. And the funny thing about Detroit is that they have pick number 32. Jags have picked 33, and Detroit has picked number 34. So most likely what Detroit will do there, they need wide receiver. Their wide receiver room was just as bad as ours last year. Um, actually, they were probably a little bit better. Um, so they might look for another receiver to pair up with Arma St. Brown and you know add to the DJ Chark thing since DJ Chark's only there on a one-year deal. So if they want a wide receiver, they will probably look at the Jaguars' needs and pick a guy based on you know, who the Jaguars need so they can, you know, pick the other guy after the Jaguars. So when I look at different guys that the Jaguars should target on number 33, and, and I addressed this actually last month, I said, look, wait till NFL free agency is over with. 
so I can take a step back and really look at what wide receiver we went after. Because if the Jaguars went out there and signed Al Robinson and Zay Jones, then I'd say, look, we probably need a guy that can play the slot, that can move around well in the slot. But the Jaguars, what they did was they went and got Kirk, and Kirk is at his best playing in the slot. I know we can move him inside and outside, but if you're not using Christian Kirk in the slot, most of his snaps, you're doing something wrong. So Kirk paid him a lot of money. He's going to be our slot guy. Also, Evan Ingram is going to play on the inside as a tight end. Um, also, LaVisca Chenault is an inside guy. LaVisca Chenault is not really an outside receiver. So with that said, the Jaguars have a huge need at receiver, but not only receiver, but outside receiver, a receiver to play the sidelines. So, uh, and, and most importantly, a number one wide receiver. That is what the Jaguars need. Now, what I did for this exercise to see who would be available at number 33, I went to cbssports.com. And they had a list of five different mocks side by side. So I took the, I used that as a basis. And there were about five receivers that I deemed would not be able to be there at number 33 for the Jaguars to take. Um, these guys being Garrett Wilson, who is kind of the consensus number one. There's also Drake London. He was not available in any mock draft for the Jaguars. Jamison Williams was available and was was unavailable in four out of five mock drafts. Now Jamison Williams is a weird case because he has a torn ACL, but had he not tore his ACL in the national championship game in the middle of January, he is most likely the number one wide receiver taken. So, but Jamison Williams, even with the torn ACL, he's good enough where a team will most likely take him, especially one of these teams that's like Maybe, you know, in the 20s, a team like Kansas City, who has two first round picks and need a, needs a receiver, you know, they might be able to afford to take a chance on him or even Green Bay. So, Jamison Williams, probably going to be unavailable. Traylon Burks was also unavailable in all the mock drafts and also Chris Olave. So, with that said, there are five receivers most likely going to be taken in the first round. So, with the Jaguars state put at number 33, I have a list of Four guys to look out for, but in my eyes, three guys that fit that fits my need. So the first guy is Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. Um, he is a very fast receiver. He has great hands. He has really, really good route running avail uh, ability, and he's also a vertical threat. You know, he is a true outside guy. You can use him as a chess piece, move him all around. I really did like what I saw out of his tape. Now, he was available in two out of five of those mock drafts. So he's kind of in that weird area like that. So Jahan Dotson, I know that's a popular name. That, that's definitely a name that I'd look out for, and, and you know, he's very, very intriguing. Best case scenario of these list of receivers, you know, he'd be a guy that I'd really want to go after. Another guy that a lot of people, Jags fans, are talking about is George Pickens out of the University of Georgia. He was available in four out of five of these mock drafts. Now, he's a big dude, 6'3", 195 pounds, you know, big receiver. He is a true outside wide receiver, extremely, extremely physical He's he he has really good hands too, and he's just a baller, man. Like he goes out there and you know, he is like the biggest bully on the field. And you don't get his kind of nastiness a lot of times out of wide receivers, but he has that, which is really cool. Um he he kind of reminds me, I don't know if this is because he played at Georgia, but he reminds me a lot of an AJ Green, um, just with his play style. So uh George Pickens, definitely a guy that I would look out for. Another name on here is Sky Moore. He was available in five out of five mock drafts with the Jaguars pick at number 33. Now he's 5'10", he's 195 pounds, and he played at Western Michigan, so he pretty much dominated the competition while he was out there. My only thing with Sky Moore, I would not draft him because I don't think he fits what the Jaguars needs. He, he looks like a true slot guy. He kind of reminded me of... Watching Rondell Moore a year ago, his college tape, this reminded me of that kind of guy, a guy that quick guy, played out of the slot, good hands, but at the end of the day, like I don't think he's going to be the true game-wrecking guy, and he's definitely not an outside type of receiver for me, so I would definitely stay away from Sky Moore if we're going at pick number 33 at least. Now, 
The ninth guy and final guy I have down here is Christian Watson, who is available in all five mock drafts. Um, he is a he reminds me a lot like of at the combine. He reminds me a lot of DJ Chark, and he has very similar um, measurables. He's six four. Runs a 4-3, 40-yard dash, and he's t- he was 10 pounds heavier than DJ Chark at 208 pounds. And, you know, he's a big receiver. He really gets after the ball very, very fast as well. And, you know, he's a guy that, look, if he, you know, he probably has to gain a little bit of weight, but he if he gains weight and, you know, he just has the right mindset on him, this guy, the sky really is the limit for this guy. And I know now he's kind of trending up a lot. You know, he's from North Dakota State. Um, that's where he went to college. Actually went to high school over in Plant, uh, Florida, over in Tampa. So he's a, he's definitely a Florida boy of pipe blood. But with him, like if he has the right head on his shoulders and he really refines his football, uh, his football ability, this guy could turn into that number one wide receiver we were really wanting out of DJ Chark for the longest time while he was over here. So with that said, I basically, of the guy, like the realistic options here that I would take if I were the Jaguars, if they're there, I'd probably run to the podium are Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, and Christian Watson. And when I look at this, I I felt a little bit better after I did more research on this because Look, if, if there's, like I said, five guys most likely taken in the first round, but there's no way, there's no way eight receivers will be drafted in the first round. Oh, gosh, I would just really, really hope uh, that's not the case. And I don't think it will be the case. So um, I think we're sitting good right now at pick number 33. I think we're going to end up with a really good receiver there. And look, man, like, Devontae Adams was a second round pick. Cooper Cup was what, like a third round pick? Uh, Tyree Kill, I think, was like sixth or seventh round. Like these, you find these receivers, man. You find these receivers. You're going to see a list of top 10 receivers in this draft class. And in five years, all those guys are going to be jumbled up. So it's on the Jaguar Sky and Department to go out there and find the best receiver. Can we just. When you look at the history of the Jaguars, we have good drafts here and there. You know, here and there, okay, the Jaguars did good that draft class, but it never seems to be back to back draft classes, or we put together three, four really good draft classes in a row. It never seems to be that case. It seems like with the Jaguars, we have a good, we have a maybe a decent draft class, and then the next year it totally flops. And the year after that, it totally flops. I mean, we have to change that narrative. 2022. You need to nail your first, your your number one overall pick. You have the choice of any player in call in, in the NFL draft. Get that player right. Get pick number 33 right. And you have two third round picks. So at the end of day three, at the end of day two, we'll have a we'll have selected three guys that day. You know, if 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 the picks stay put, we don't move up or move back or whatever. So the Jaguars have a real opportunity to get better. It feels like we did some good things in free agency. However, you don't build a team in free agency. The reason why we had to spend all that money in free agency was because we draft so bad. You know, this, you know, I can go over and over about this draft, and I'm getting I'm getting tired of wasting draft picks, man, because these wasted drafts are the reason why we're drafting in the top five every year. So with all that said, let me know what you guys think of these guys that are going to be available. Let me know, you know, look look up a little bit about them. Look up some YouTube videos. Let me know what you guys think of at least the the, the three receivers I was talking about between Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, and Christian Watson. Let me know which guy that you like the most, and, uh, you know, we can have a discussion down below. Also, Again, quick shout out to our sponsor, Manscaped, and also go join the Relevant app. Um, I have the description down below. Join the Jaguars Fanatics vibe. Um, I'll be out of town this weekend, but so I won't be making videos, but I'll be in there communicating and chatting with all you guys. So definitely go over there and join that. And yeah, with all that said, thanks for watching the video. Drop a like for me. And go Jags. You guys watched the whole video. Really appreciate that. You guys can subscribe to the channel for the best source of Jaguars news on the YouTube platform. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at UCF underscore Jaguar. And you can become a member of the channel for as low as $3 a month for exclusive channel content. Thank you guys and go Jags.